Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another bonus episode of Anatomy of the Church and State. I am your host, Jeremiah Campana, and as promised, I was at the Flashpoint Tour uh, over the weekend here in Ohio, Rick Green, Jim Caviezel, uh, all kinds of folks, and I had mentioned to you guys that if I had found uh, or, or, or heard any, any good action items that we as Christians could take that I would share them with you. Uh, it just so happens Rick Green, of course, my guy, shared a ton uh, and I'm going to share the ones I think are the best with you. But first, I wanted to highlight a couple of freedom fighters of faith because I want to elevate people that are uh, fighting this war on the ground. And Pastor John Amanchukwu, uh, he is a freedom fighter of faith. And he went viral for going into a Lego store and asking the employees why uh, they were promoting LGBT to children. Uh, he goes to school board meetings across the country, but he shared a video on Twitter that I'm going to share with you uh, where he highlights Bishop Patrick Wooden Sr. digging into this school board. Uh, this is a prime example of how every Christian across the country should be, I'm sorry, what they should be doing in these school board meetings. So I'm going to play this video. Now, I've been having a lot of problems with Riverside FM, which is who I use to record. And every time I try to show video, uh, this is like my uh, 11th time uh, trying to record this episode because whenever I share video, uh, something goes wrong. The audio and video uh, unsync. Uh, the video's real choppy, so the video might be choppy for you guys, but pay attention to the audio. This is what bravery looks like, and like I, I've been telling you guys, um, and I want to start off with a Bible verse reading, of course, because we're going to be persecuted. And the question is, do you fear man or do you fear God? I used to fear man. I used to care what people thought about me. I used to keep quiet on issues that um, I that I knew better on, um, that, uh, I was afraid of the backlash I would get. Look, look, it's in the brochure. I keep telling you guys, we will be persecuted. Uh, but we have to fear God more than we fear man. When we die and head towards judgment, uh, it is God who will be judging us, not man. And, uh, we want to be able to tell him that we stood firm in his word, right? So, uh, let me begin with this verse. So we jump to Matthew chapter 5, verses 10 through 12. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when they revel and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely for my sake. Rejoice and be exceedingly glad, for great is your reward in heaven. For so they persecuted the prophets who were before you. It's inevitable, folks. Uh, we just got to stand brave. You know, pray uh, for uh, bravery from the Holy Spirit uh, that we can stand firm in God's word and in Jesus Christ, uh, because ultimately that is who we answer to, not man. Uh, so let me go ahead and share my screen. Like I said, if the video's choppy, I do apologize, uh, but the audio should be clear. Uh, so here we go. Bishop John... Uh, I'm going to pause that. I'm going to make it full video for us. And here we go. And I want to take the time to first wish everybody a happy Jesus pride. First of all, yes, love the flag. Christians need to take back the rainbow. It is our symbol. It is not a symbol of sinful pride. For the month of June, we have designated this month uh, to Jesus pride because we love the Lord and we believe in biblical principles and uh, uh, and we're glad to wish you a Jesus pride as you wish the rest of us a pride uh, happy pride month now I'm standing before you today as a grandfather I got to have wonderful grandkids I have one who is in the age group of this book when Aiden became a brother and uh, when Aiden was born everyone thought he was a girl but once he came out as a trans boy, Aiden and his parents 
fixed the parts of his life that didn't fit anymore. Did you notice that uh, in the book, fixed the part of his life that didn't work, any, work anymore? Listen, y'all, Jesus, God does not make mistakes. God does not make mistakes. Whatever you were born as, that's what you were meant to be. If you got something up here telling you otherwise, um, that is a uh, that is an issue that can be resolved um, by by turning your life over to Jesus Christ and following in His footsteps and maybe some therapy. But but there's nothing to fix, especially as a child who has no idea what that even means. And he settled happily into being himself. Aiden didn't feel like any kind of girl. He was really another kind of boy. Now, this book is for kids, five-year-olds, six-year-olds, so forth and so on. And um, this book is available in 31 elementary schools in our county. This is garbage. <laughs> This is garbage. This is garbage, he says. This is garbage. And whoever is responsible for this ought to be ashamed. And I want to say this. There is a judgment day coming. But there is evidence that the God of the Bible is passing judgment. When God passes judgment, you know what he does? Absolutely right. There is a mountain of evidence that us as a country... Uh, fleeing God, uh, Christians uh, becoming lukewarm, Christians leaving the re leaving Jesus, uh, turning our backs on God, uh, and you see what's happening to our society. It's crumbling at the fabric. And, uh, you know, like I had mentioned with Pastor Chris, if you saw my last episode of the Anatomy of the Church and State, uh, the only thing that can save this country uh, is is God, is, is the church. Uh, rallying uh, warriors for Christ and and and, and go, coming back to His Word. He gives people over to vile affections, vile thoughts. When they reject His truth and decide, no matter what, they're going to believe what they want to believe anyway. You know what God have says? He says, "Have at it." And it's evident that in many cases, I'm seeing judgment pass. Because there is no way anyone in their right mind can argue that the things that we're hearing today that's being placed in our high schools, elementary schools, middle schools for kids to hear and read and practice has anything to do with making them better, making America better, making our neighborhoods better. Exactly. What does any of this gender crap in schools have to do with Reading, writing, and arithmetic. What are they learning? Why is the uh, um, education in America still ranked poorly around the world? Uh, why aren't we focusing on the things that matter? And I, I have a theory. He goes on. This is trash. That to the extent that you can, you will rise up against this. There ought to be something in us that will make us want to protect the hearts and minds and even the appetites of our children. And many of them have no sexual appetite at all until they read this. Why are Absolutely. Why are he's about to ask, why are we sexualizing our children? Um you know, I hate to say it, folks, but all roads lead to pedophilia. That's the only reason they want to sexualize your children. There is no other reason why. These are, these are instruction manuals, most of these books, that have graphic photos in them. And uh, this uh, has nothing to do with a, a, a child ac accepting uh, themselves as a new normal and everything to do with uh, pedophilia. This is a slippery slope that we've been been slipping on uh, down this hill. And at the end and at the bottom of this hill is eventually the left is going to normalize or try to normalize sex with children. It's coming, folks. It's coming. If you don't stand up, it will it will be here before you know it. You're gonna blink, and uh, next thing you know, um, they'll they'll be insisting that you call pedophiles minor attracted persons. You watch.
are we sexualizing our children? I'm as angry about this as I can be. And I pray that you will consider uh, our words and give our children a chance. They're not sex toys and they're not your kids. We want to leave raising the children to the parents. Thank you. Exactly like he said, they aren't your children. But the left isn't having kids and they're aborting their kids. So they need someone's kids. And they're looking to you, Mr. and Mrs. Conservative Christian. Uh, anyway, uh, this next one I want to highlight now. This guy, there was a, 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 a street preacher uh, in Reading, Pennsylvania, who was arrested at a pride event uh, for preaching the Bible. And he, uh, I wanted to show you this real quick uh, because I want you to pay close attention to the um, the police officer that arrests this guy. Um, so we're going to go to the Daily Caller. I'm going to share my screen here. And Ollie London posted the tweet with the video that we're going to share. Um, and I, again, I want you to pay close attention to the police officer because um, I, I hate I'm going to ruffle some feathers with this one. And I, I hate to say it, but um, those of us who have stood by the blue and back the blue and, and all the conservatives who back the blue, uh, I, I want I need you to question whether the blue is really going to back you. Uh, of course, this isn't true for all police officers, but my fear is that a good majority, uh, you know, 60% or higher, um, regardless of how egregious the order is, will follow that order. Uh, they will arrest you for being a Christian. They'll arrest you for going to church. They'll come and take your guns. If the left ever really does give the order, hey, we're coming for your guns. Who do you think they are going to send to take them? It's going to be the police officers. And my fear is it's going to be guys like this that we're about to see uh, that with no hesitation uh, and with anger and malice uh, and, and, and annoyance at us for just being godly people uh, will we'll just jump right, chomp at the bit to, to just ob blindly obey these orders. That's my fear. I hope I'm wrong. I really do. Um, but you can see... Let them have their day, he says, if you, if you can see this here. Let them have their day, this officer says. Here, I'm going to full screen it. Let them have their day. I wonder if he would be saying the same thing if the roles were reversed and this was a Christian event and the left was across the street protesting a Christian event. Would this officer say, let them have their day? Would he feel the same way? I somehow doubt it. Okay, with respect. Oh, I'm respecting that, that's You know who's cheering for us? The people that are in hell. So you do you, and I'm going to do me. This is public power. I mean, he's not wrong, uh, but as soon as the word God comes out of this guy's mouth, watch the officer snap. Yo. God is not. That's See how quickly, and then they're going to cheer. And this on film. Can I give him my bag while stuff's in? <laughs> Yo, I'm gonna need you to blessed, go to blessed are the persecuted. You hear him cheering in the background. You saw how quickly, as soon as the word God came out of that dude's mouth, that officer jumped right on him. It's sad. It, it really is. But anyways, folks, uh, I want to run through some action items, some things we can do as Christians to help turn the fight back in our favor. Uh, Rick Green was at the Flashpoint event and he dropped some gems that I want to share with you that I think are practical and I will I will put these uh, on the screen for you. Uh, so in case you want to write them down. Um, the first thing we need to do, pray and seek his will. Second thing, read his word for truth and answers. Pray without ceasing. Let me bring up the verse uh, because that is backed by scripture. First Thessalonians chapter five, verses 16 through 18. Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. 
constantly be praying, pray for our leaders, pray for everything, pray, pray, pray for everything, pray all day, every day. Um, it doesn't take much. I mean, I know that sounds like, like, what am I going to do? Stop working and, and, and just pray all day. No, but you can take a couple minutes, uh, 30 seconds and, and just constantly throughout your day, you got to be praying for these things. We got to, we got to pray for our leaders. We got to pray for the issues we care about, um, and pray without ceasing. It matters. It really matters. And you have to pick up your Bible, uh, because I'm looking here at a stat and I'll post this link in the show description from Statista, 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 uh, last year in 2021, 11% of Christians read their Bible every day. It's shameful. Your answers are in the word. And how can you know the answers if you're not reading the Bible? 11%? Come on, man. That is shameful. That is shameful. Pick up your Bibles. Um, the, some of the, the answers you're looking for are going to be in there uh, to a lot of this stuff. So uh, I thought those were two, two great, great, great um, tips uh, from Rick, from Rick uh, at that event. Um, number three. You can make one call of encouragement a week to somebody who is in the fight. So if you know anybody who's active in politics, trying to change our country for the better, call them and give them some encouragement because we, as our, as fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, it is our job to support each other. So if you know anybody who's in the fight, who's been at school board meetings, uh, uh, preaching like how we just saw, if you know someone who's lobbying for for issues and, and uh, protecting the rights of the unborn. If you're, if you, if you know a politician uh, personally that you know is is fighting to, you know, bring biblical principles back, you know, give them some encouragement. Give them a call and encourage them in the work that they're doing. Uh, number four, attend a local government meeting. This is real easy to do. Go to your next city council meeting. Go to your next Department of Energy meeting. Whatever it is, find something that you're interested in and just sit back, attend the meeting, and listen. You don't have to say nothing. You can just go there and learn how it works. Learn how they're doing their job. Um, it's kind of hard to influence and change things if, if you're not sure how the whole system even works. So, uh, you know, if it would behoove you to just... Take a gander at your local city council. How does city council conduct these meetings? What are the kinds of things that they talk about? How do they decide on, on issues, city ordinances, taxes, all that good stuff? Um, and like I said, it doesn't have to be city council. Like there's all kinds of departments. Find a department that interests you and just attend their meeting. Sit in silence. Listen. Just observe. Um, number five, meet with your legislators and build relationships with them. Um, now, Chances are you're not going to go to D.C. and meet with your federal legislator. But if you live like me, close to your state capital, you can meet with your state legislatures. You can meet with your local county and, and, and city legislators. Uh, just meet with them and get to know them. Build some rapport. Uh, uh, get to know your legislators so that way maybe uh, you can. Uh, and, and I tell you what, he did mention that come election season, uh, they will take more meetings with uh, their um, with, with their voter base uh, because uh, they all want votes, right? So uh, that's a good time to meet with your legislators and again get to know them, build rapport. I've worked a hundred. Uh, that's an exaggeration, obviously, but I've worked a bunch of different sales jobs in my life. Rapport is important. Trust is important. Um, so uh, build that relationship. Start start building a relationship with your local legislators. Easy enough. Uh, number six, volunteer for a candidate or cause. If there's something you care about, volunteer for the campaign. Uh, whether that be a, 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 maybe your town is looking to uh, ban um, abortions, uh, you know, right up to the uh, a point of, of birth. Uh, you know, you've got a lot of these uh, cities now that are allowing abortions literally right up until the day of birth. Maybe your you have some initiatives in your state that are trying to stop that. Get involved with it. Uh, maybe it's just a, a politician that uh, you know uh, his platform is built around biblical principles. Become a part of it. Um, and on the next note, number seven, donate to a candidate or cause. If you don't feel like getting on the ground and, and doing the street level work, donate. Um, I think Rick mentioned that uh, something close to 5% of Christians donate to campaigns or causes. That has to change because the left has, the, the devil has George Soros money. 
billions and billions of dollars are being poured across the country to fund satanic principles. So if we have the opportunity to counter that with our dollars, we can and we should. Uh, so, you know, donate to a cause. Uh, number eight, share your election picks. Now, we all love to share our presidential picks, but share your local picks. Who are you voting for locally? What are you voting for locally? Get on social media, share what you're voting for and why you're voting for it. We don't care if you're voting for uh, Trump or whatever, because we know that information is going to be shared a hundred million times. And we're going to be debate 20 come 2024. We'll be debating about that all day, but there's important stuff going on in your local community that you also need to be talking about. And finally, uh, number nine, if you're feeling really bold and really brave run for local office, there's plenty of uh, me as a, a volunteer candidate organizer for the libertarian Mises caucus. I know for a fact that there are tons of positions in government that are rarely contested like uh, your county treasurer or you know find something that maybe you would like to do and find a winnable race there's winnable races in every county i guarantee you you can find something to get your foot in the door and run for a local position uh, it doesn't have to be crazy i'm not asking you to run for state senator or uh, even you know a, 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 a representative just find something local your state treasurer the you know the auditor or something i you know i find something local uh, that makes sense for you if you're feeling really bold but Anyways, guys, that's that's all that's all I had for you. Those were the action items from over the weekend. I, uh, again, I appreciate uh, you guys watching. It's it's uh, it's it's uh, it means it means a lot uh, that you guys watch my content. Uh, God is God has blessed us, and and I, I just want to keep sharing His wisdom and uh, and having folks on my normal episodes and adding me on the church and state that can that can help spread. Uh, that knowledge and wisdom of God and in, in, in his word. And, and just let's all band together uh, against evil because we need to, uh, as brothers and sisters in Christ, our enemy, our common enemy will always be Satan and, uh, and, and the world and what he's, because he, he is the king of, he, it, this is his kingdom. The world is Satan's kingdom. Uh, so we have to fight hard uh, to not be sucked in by it. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and lead us out with prayer. Heavenly father, Thank you so much uh, for allowing us to fellowship together. Thank you so much for my listeners. Thank you for giving us another day of life, uh, Lord Jesus, for the air in our lungs, the, the, the food in our bellies, uh, and the shelters over our heads, uh, and the cars we may be, be driving in as we listen to this. Just thank you for everything you have provided for us, Lord Jesus. None of this is possible. Nothing is possible without you, uh, Lord Jesus. So we thank you. And we pray for the Holy Spirit in discernment on how we can get involved. And we pray for the Holy Spirit to fill us with the, the courage necessary to stand on your word and biblical principles, Lord Jesus. So just Fill us with the courage and bravery that, that we need uh, to fight back in this spiritual warfare that we find ourselves in. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. Folks, as always, Jesus and freedom over everything. God bless.